Connor, just can you give me your sense of kind of where, where the group is at? Once again, my teammates come up short. You know that's easily what he's thinking. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, God. Why do you think I said that? I know, but it's just, you, <laughs> you just see it as his, the look on his face when the it comes. The look on his face uh, says, I'm, I'm quoting. Oh, I didn't know about this. By the way, uh, first, uh, Sean said, I think Kucherov already handled the Honest Press Conference for you guys. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He, he really did. That's I probably really the Honest Press it. Conference where we're going to see. And I didn't know about this right now, but um, uh, yeah, there's a uh, four dislikes already. We had a dislike before we even started today. Oh so I guess it's hard. Yeah, I mean, probably from my family. I don't know. Smash that like. Yeah, maybe Smash that like. like. All right. So these are our honest press conferences where we take on the role of someone, and it could be a player, could be an executive. We actually got three executives this week, and we say what they really want to say, and of course. We have to do the headliner based on Mr. John Vilkowski as Julian Breezebois. Well, we just won our second Stanley Cup back to back. Uh, I'm in, uh, totally a cloud line right now. I'm really kind of at a loss for words there. Um, I got to thank Steve Eiserman for really teaching me the ropes, teaching me how to you know swindle, manage a cap doing a couple of other things uh, amongst that. But um, we did it again. We're the champs. Champa Bay is back on top. And we are not going anywhere, despite what all of you peons think. Uh, we're not losing anybody. And you know what? I'll handle this. I've got it under control. You think I'm moving Steven Stamkos? You think I'm moving Anthony Sorelli? You think I'm going to lose... Barkley Goodrow or Blake Coleman or Yanni Gord. Yeah, I'll let you have fun with it. Try me. Let's uh, let's see what you got. I'll I'll take some questions and I'll have fun with this. Let's go. All right, Julian. What do you say to the, your critics that said you circumvented the salary cap and was over by eighteen million dollars? I'll channel my inner best player on my team, aka Nikita Kucherov, and just. Tell you to go shove a stick up your ass because I mean, really, we did what was within the rules. The NHL looked into it, it was in the rules. Um, funny, the last I checked, I don't remember seeing the backlash about this when Chicago did the same thing in 2015 with uh Marion Hosa. They beat our Tampa Bay Lightning, but nobody was complaining about that then, huh? Nah, huh? Where are all. Where are all the haters from back then? Where, where is that energy? Bring me that energy. Bring it to me. Because I, I want to know where it was. Because you want to know where it was? It was nowhere to be found. Nowhere. And you know what? Complain about it. Cry. Weep. Ooh, let, me, let me get the world's smallest violin and play the world's saddest song for you on it. Because no rules were broken. And you know what? To quote Vince McMahon and his theme song, you guys had no chance in hell of beating us. Um, Julian, it was obvious that the Canadians didn't really match up well against you guys. You had a relatively easy time in that series. Uh, there were some that said the real Stanley Cup final was the matchup in the prior round against the Islanders. Um, they were the first team to have you guys facing elimination in two years. Um, they really push you to the limit. Was that, did you get at any point in that series um, where you guys think to yourself, wow, you know, we really might not have a chance to go back to back here going into that game seven? What type of drugs do you people take before you ask these questions? <laughs> like, seriously. Like, what, what kind of question is that? You thought that, <laughs> really thought that we were going to lose that series? You had, you had, you had, uh, what's his name? Scott Mayfield, that scrub, went and cross checked our best player in the side, tried to break his ribs, and we still came out on top and won that series. I mean, sure, if we got to game seven, but we didn't think we were ever going to lose that series. I, 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 if you go into a series thinking that you're going to lose that series, or you're really worried about losing, chances are you're probably going to lose the series. So, uh, yeah, you could say the, I guess the real Stanley Cup finals was probably the conference 
sem or the conference finals or the semifinals, whatever they're called this year, because it's the wacky configuration. But no, we didn't think we were going to lose the fish sticks. What kind of garbage is that? Oh, well, we have a question about a merchandising opportunity for you. Uh, Sean asked, Julian, are you going to start selling the shirt Kucherov was wearing during the presser? Uh, yeah, I, I think we should. I think that's a, uh, that's a money maker. Um, I think Nikita Kucherov would be a great uh, villain in WWE because he embraced it. I, I mean, I don't care how many beers deep he was. He's got to do a little bit of better than Bud Light, though, Nikita. Like, I mean, what, what absolute stoly something? No, why, why Bud Light? We, I mean, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess, yeah, maybe we can run it into a sponsorship thing with Bud Light, so I probably shouldn't be trashing them the way that I am right now, but it's really not that good of a beer. Um, so yeah, uh, Nikita, Nikita is great for us. He's a, a godsend because he's super talented, probably the best player in the league right now. I don't care what anybody says about that Conor McLoser guy in Edmonton who watches hockey in Siberia anyway. Um, but yeah, Nikita is a moneymaker. And WWE, Vince McMahon, if you're uh, watching, we're open to a partnership. We'll have Nikita come on and we'll have him just harass the shit out of your crowds and rile them up and you can make cha-ching with my Russian moneymaker. Yeah. All right, Anthony, you might want to sign him out of here. <laughs> All right, Julian, uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, you're a terrible GM. See you later. <laughs> Go <save> yourself, asshole. <laughs> All right, that was John Volkowski as Julian Brisebois, and um, I definitely thought there was going to be a you suck, but don't worry, I know that one's coming <laughs> soon. But we also got the Seattle Kraken making the expansion draft coming this week. We will also be uh, having our own... Um, uh, Seattle expansion draft next Tuesday when we broadcast. Um, but uh, did we lose Philk? You still there? Or you just lost the camera for a minute? All right, we'll, we'll just take five seconds. Uh, go through some of the comments too. Yeah, they knew they were heading back to the playoffs. And uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit ballsy, but yeah. which honestly, I, I think I think the league may because I've heard it mentioned the league may do something where. In that situation, like Kucherov's, if if you, how, let's say, had, at least didn't play in like five games during the regular season, you're not eligible to play. You're not eligible to play in the playoffs. Um, I think yeah. that's what they might, they very well might make after but all. Something that's got to be addressed with the CBA when they open it up the next time. By the way, Chris, welcome back again. Uh, we're getting closer to, to Q and A time. Don't worry, everybody, hang on in there. We still got our press conferences, but we also got to get this press conference, Seattle. Coming into the league next week, and or, or officially, actually, they're in the they're in the league right now. But Anthony is going to be Seattle GM Ron Francis. So all eyes on me coming up the next couple of days here on the seventeenth, where I get to see all the teams' protected lists, and my, me and my team could really get to work on who we're going to select from every team. Um, Analysts, I got to tell you, you know, being a GM of a brand new team, it's a clean slate. And you guys think what Vegas did is impressive? Just wait till you see what Ronnie Francis does with the Seattle Kraken. I'm going to construct a Stanley Cup winning team that actually gets the job done in their first year, unlike the Knights who lost to those Capitals. Um, so, you know, I'm looking, I'm not going to do any, I'm not going to be a sucker. You know, Andrew Ladd, I'm not taking that guy. You know, Brett Howden, the Rangers thinking, oh, well, let's, let's uh, re-sign him. You know, it's another guy eligible, but I'm not taking that clown. He's terrible. So all these teams that want to pawn their bad guys off on me, unless you really make it sweet and throw in like a, a first round pick or a top prospect, I'm not helping you guys out. All your teams in cap hell, you could sit there and try to pawn off your players on the Arizona Coyotes for all I care, because it's not happening with the Seattle Kraken. You saw how I played in Pittsburgh. I was a champion, and I'm going to be a champion in Seattle. My coach, Dave Haxtell, you know, he couldn't get the job done in Philly, but, you know, I, I blame that on you know, a loser like Jake Voracek who they're going to try to get me to take. No way is that happening. 8.25 million. Guy can kiss my ass. So I'm going to put together a team of winners, high skill, high integrity, skate hard, and, you know, we're going to win the division in our first year. So, you know, ballsy, yeah, but if you guys have any questions for me, I'll take some right now. Yeah, Ron, um, 
just looking at a couple of things uh, with players and protecting certain players or taking players and deals that you were talking about before. Is there anyone in specific that you would target maybe to try to uh, do a little uh, hoodwinkling of? Yeah, I, I would like Connor McDavid for them to Oilers. Oh, I'm gonna, okay. I'm going to try to acquire him. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm going to, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offer my first round pick for the next five years. Um, you know, some some fish, you know, in Seattle, they got really good seafood. So I'll offer him some, you know, high expense uh, Alaskan king crab. Um, you know, some sockeye salmon that's popular around the Seattle parts. Um, and then, honestly, the kicker that might get it over the edge is, you know, that show on ABC with the doctors, uh, Grey's Anatomy, that's real popular. I'll throw in the whole box set of the whole series. Um, you know, and Ken Holland's a little bit of an idiot there. I think he had a crush on, um, you know, McDreamy, whoever that guy was in that show. So, um, you know, hopefully that gets the job done. But that's that's Pat- Patrick Dempsey. I think that's his name. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but um, that's who uh, that's that's who I'm gonna get. I'm targeting Connor McDavid for the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, good good luck with that, bro. Thanks. Um, so if you had to select one of uh, three choices, uh, uh, you have Jake Voracek, mm-hmm. Nick Letty, mm-hmm. or uh, this girl that keeps pressuring me to try to start dating her. Uh, which choice would you actually take uh, as less of a headache than the rest of them? Um, well, not Voracek. Uh, I, I hate his hair. Um, and I don't like him. His breath stinks. Uh, so, and Dave Haxtell doesn't like him from Philly. I think, I think he pulled some pranks on Hax and, you know, antiqued them. If you guys don't know, that's when you throw water in the guy's face and then put flour on them immediately. You know, batter is all caked in his eyes and stuff. So he doesn't like Voracek. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Nick Letty. You know, he's a smooth skating bastard. When I was in Pittsburgh, I was familiar with a guy, Paul Coffey, who skated really well. Uh, I really like guys who skate that fast. So, um, you know, and he's got a sweet beard. Uh, unlike, you know, Lou Lamorello in New York, I'm going to allow my players to have facial hair so he can keep it. Um, and he's only signed for one more year, you know, so one more year really won't affect our cap too much. Um, you know, reasonable 5.5. So, um, yeah, to answer your question, I'm going to go with uh, – Leds, where I believe uh, you know, those Islander fans call them. Uh, we got a question coming back in from Sean again. Uh, what is your favorite Seattle band? Is it uh, Nirvana, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, or Alice in Chains? Um, I'm going to have to go with Nirvana. You know, I'm, I'm a big Kurt Cobain fan and uh, smells like teen spirit. I know that was a mainstream one, but that got me hooked on music uh, the minute I heard that song. So um, definitely, definitely Nirvana. Phil, what would be your answer on that one? Ooh, um, I'm going to have to lean towards Alice and Jeans. I'm a big Alice and Jeans guy. I love all four of these bands, but if I had to rank them, I'd probably go Alice and Jeans. Um, I'd probably say I could toss up Nirvana and Soundgarden as two, and then Pearl Jam would probably be four for me. I have been open about saying this. I grew up liking the other two, not the big two, the, the more popular two. Uh, Alice in Chains and Soundgarden could be either or with me. I'll just say Alice in Chains. But, I mean, Black Hole Sun is among one of my favorite songs. And then uh, Nirvana, uh, sorry, Pearl Jam, then Nirvana. Although I've learned to appreciate Nirvana more as I got older. So, Ron, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we're going to move on. Good luck next week with the expansion draft. Thanks, Thanks. Leroy Morello. I mean, Ron Francis. <laughs> yeah. And uh, make sure you take Brett Howden, please. Yeah. All right. Well... Uh, we got one more for you guys, and uh, unfortunately, he's mine, and it's Kevin Adams of the Buffalo Sabres. Fuck! Oh, my God. I got the worst job in all the sports. Seriously. I mean, was there a gypsy curse on my team? What did Jason Botterell do? I mean, he just, he completely just, this is terrible. I mean, I can't even think of another team. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait. Um, all right, keep it together. Keep it together. That's that's what my friends are texting me right now. You gotta you gotta be strong because otherwise, okay. All right. All right. All right. So, well, Eichel wants out. Sam Reinhart wants out. Um, the equipment manager wants out. Uh, the we don't even have a catering company anymore. I mean, come on. I mean, doesn't anybody want to be a Buffalo Sabre? Please, anybody? Anybody? I mean, first overall pick, Owen Power, maybe? I mean, 
we got him. That guy's like nine feet tall. He's going to be the next Chris Pronger, I, I think. I mean, I mean, there's always Eklund. You could always get him too. Can somebody please just give me a package that I can turn back to my fans and go, there is something, there is something I could do. I mean, I don't want to end up with Brett Howden and uh, Colin Blackwell and uh, and four players to be named later. They don't even have names now. So, I mean, okay, I'm trying to keep it together. Just a week left before the draft. We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Uh, my star player needs neck surgery, and we don't want him to have it. But, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, they told me that I got one of 31 jobs, and uh, as long as I got one of those, it's always a good thing. I really hope after this somebody hires me because I'm definitely getting fired. It might be one or two years. I mean, then again, I mean, uh, the auto GM, I mean, he got he got fleeced a couple of years ago. And now look who's the one that said he did the fleecing. So I'm going to hold my breath and just um, hold on. What are we? Serenity now. Serenity now. Serenity now. OK, I will take some questions. Yeah, Kevin, uh, looks like you're, or they're saying you're asking prices on Jack Eichel are a little high. Um, do you do any type of recreational drugs on the side, or are you like heavily medicated, or are your asking prices going to come back down to earth so this way you could actually facilitate a trade? Because obviously your best player wants nothing to do with your team, and you kind of burned your bridge with them by saying you only want players that want to be here. Yeah, well, I only want players that want to be here, and and that statement does not make me nervous at all. That um, um, that, that I, I just want to make sure that I'm sending the message to the organizations that we are um, going to be serious. We want to re we want to rebuild. We we weren't even done with our last rebuild, and we're already rebuilding again. So it's sort of like I I just. I mean, I, I, everybody wants out. And as we got right here, the fan base wants out. <laughs> so it's, it's just, uh, I, I mean, I, I want somebody to, I mean, I'm hoping there's going to be a way to fix this. Don Granado seems to be a very good hire for us. I mean, after all, he's the brother of Tony and Cammy. So it's, um, it's, it's 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 good, uh, but you know what? I gotta ask for the moon because if I come back and I give him a bag of pucks for Jack Eichel, the fan base will never let me have buffalo wings ever again. And I love buffalo wings, and uh, they'll be they'll hate me more than they do Andrew Cuomo, and that is a lot. So, <laughs> um, I'll take the next question. So, um, Kevin, I know there's um, a lot of focus on right now about Jack Eichel and also Sam Reinhardt to an extent. Um, but what are you thinking about Jeff Skinner and that heinous contract that he got? Um, why? And, you know, are you concerned that that contract is just going to bog you down even more in the future? Because let's face it, he's terrible. For a guy making $9 million, he's, he's, he's real bad. I, I would go to say that that's the worst contract in hockey right now. What are your thoughts on that? Well, all I have to say about that, and I can finally get snarky about something, just <laughs> ask Sergei Bobrovsky about his contract. So the um, the one thing I can say is that uh, we're expecting Jeff Skinner to bounce back next year and uh, have a solid... S <laughs> <laughs> they told me to take one of 31 jobs and I end up with this one. Oh my, oh my god why why i mean nothing in life is working and i even got some fake tears going on right now <laughs> i mean i can't oh all right don't worry we're gonna be announcing the number one pick right after we trade our franchise center uh so it's um, okay, well, Jeff Skinner was a, is, is, a, is a good contract. He's going to be... Um, don't worry, we could probably move him in four years <laughs> and retain all of his salary. I'm not sure if that's possible to do under the PBA, but we might do that. I mean, we have other exciting prospects <laughs> like... Um, T. Thompson's good. And in case of Middlestat came around... Um, Dylan Cousins? Dylan Cousins. Oh, Dylan Cousins. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank God. Yes. 
Um, and then uh, there, was, there was the kid that we drafted last year. I'm actually just kind of uh, forgetting what his name is because uh, I thought, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. No, but you know, there's a there's a there's a there's a bright future here in Buffalo. Everybody should come down. Kevin, I'm, yeah. I'm going to put you out of your misery here and tell you, thanks for your time. Go take some Adderall or some antidepressants and, um, you know, just don't kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> this is vodka, by the way. This was vodka. <laughs> All of it. <sighs> we hope the best for you, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, see, and, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need it. All right. So... <laughs> <laughs> that was our honest press conferences on what they on what we wish they could say. Lower your price, your goof. Yes, yes, we need the, he needs definitely needs to lower the price. Um you can have Chris Kreider straight up. Uh for 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 who what were we talking about with that one? Yeah. Uh you uh, know what? I would I would actually take a flyer on, on Sam Reinhardt if the asking price is down. Yes, the fan base wants yeah. out. That is way too accurate. At least yeah. Andrew Cuomo fantasizing about grabs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he tried that this And all right, and thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that one actually just the, the the funny part about this is we improv all this. So um yeah, this, I, this is not improv true. classes, yeah. that's a different story. No, this is none of this is scripted. This is us just flying off the air and just saying the most wacky, honest type of shit we can say. <laughs> <laughs> we always want to go over broke on that one. But yeah. Again, so, what do you guys think? As uh, Kevin Adams on suicide watch right now, is Julian Breeze boss so full of himself he doesn't want to punch him in the face? And is um, Ron Francis uh, probably holding the best cards out of any GM right now? Put it all in the comments. I, I would have asked. I would have asked, is Ron Francis really Lou Lamorello in a, in a, in a disguise? Yeah, well, you know, he we <laughs> did hear from Lou. He was, he'll put the horse's head in your bed. <laughs> uh, if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hmm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.